Welcome to Now Hiring, a podcast about staffing, recruiting, and talent. I'm Scott Montmany, and with me, as always, is our host, Samir Penacalapati, as well as our friend, Andy Weiss. And we've been having this ongoing conversation, and that really, Samir's been driving this conversation in this industry for a long time now, I would say. Um, at least let's, a not, long let's, let's not put years to it. Oh, okay, <laughs> no, no numbers, no numbers. Yeah. I don't want to... <laughs> Uh, we won't get into that, but we will uh, dig just a little further. We we thought we thought you know I, I guess that was our, um, my hubris that we could get that topic done in just a few episodes. No, no. When you're trying to build a hundred million dollar or a high value staffing company, let alone a hundred million cross that hundred million dollar barrier, you might need a few more episodes before you get everything that you need. And Andy, when last episode, and you can follow these sequentially, I encourage you to go and dig back to some of the gems that uh, Samir had for you in terms of growing a staffing business. But Andy, we left, left another cliffhanger. You had a question for Samir that we didn't even have enough time to get to. Yeah, so so my question, Samir, uh, you were, gave us a bunch of great insights on this journey to 100 million, but the initial insight that you gave us when we were starting was to focus on a particular niche. But then as you're driving towards a hundred million, how do you know when to add another vertical, add another category to the mix? Cause I have to, you know, unless you, unless you land on kind of, you know, the sweet spot category or, or niche, it's going to be hard to just ride that, that one, all the way to 100 million. So, what, how do you know? We want the paint by numbers, right, Andy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I you know, and I, I think it's tough to pick a, uh, a numbers, but I think I would just generally, my experience would say, if you stay maybe three or four, or maybe two, three sectors, maybe one or two, um, you know, technical specialties. Those are the good numbers to focus on uh, because when you pick a when you pick a um, number, like when you pick these uh, industries, you want to make sure you're not picking for the sake of a number. You're picking because you have an expertise uh, in those spaces. Like you know, whether your team who has built an expertise. Or if you you yourself has an expertise in the space and you understood those customers and markets and segments, uh, you know stuff. So I I I I'm, I'm hesitant to put any number to it, but I think it's two to three sectors, one or two okay. uh, technical, that makes uh, sense. technical does, specialities. So does the, but my assumption then is you you have to have that automation and act in place in order to be able to absorb. Absolutely. Those are additional that, particles. Otherwise, it's just going to be chaos, right? So if, if you look at it, right, the first layer is really about creating a niche, creating a client, creating like your name for yourself. Second, you are the ACT. ACT is actually weighing you, like putting you, like it's really carrying you to the clients and your the whole business. The ACT is the base, right? Once you have the ACT and then you build a third layer is basically building a culture around that. Like, you know, how... Can you, how you deal with customers, how we deal with uh, consultants, how we deal with your back office teams. And this is really building a culture around of growth uh, oriented mindset. And, and it doesn't come just like that. Like, you know, the way you incentivize your teams, the way you would, um, mm -hmm. um, you would encourage your, um, you know, teams like, you know, you, you need to have a uh, marketing teams, your sales teams, you, you have um, your um, delivery teams, you know, all of that stuff needs to be properly incentivized, set in a good place. So all of that requires build a culture around uh, for the growth. So if you build a culture on the growth, you ACTs becomes your foundation and then you build the business on top of that. Once so you have a strong ACT foundation, you just keep adding those industries where you have an expertise or a knowledge. So I imagine uh, culture is one of the things that changes the most as you scale, right? So yeah. it has to constantly evolve as well. Yeah, culture is your binder of all these things. And does that, does the culture then help you decide what industries that you're adding? No, the culture is about like whatever you, you know, you you set yeah. some policies, you set some uh, guidelines and vision 
how you run the business, how you treat your employees, how you treat your customers, you know, all of how you treat your suppliers, all of that is a culture of the business. This is that. Then you have ACT is really, you know, your foundation, like a, the, you know, your foundation for your home, like, you know, your foundation for the business. And on top of that, you would build these, you know, industry verticals. Really depends on like your your expertise, whether you may have a team that have not knowledgeable enough on this specific industry, like for talking about utilities business, energy business, right? Somebody who worked in the space and who understood the um, the needs of the business, cyclicality of the business, and the expansion plans of the business, and and how much is the industry is going over a time, you know, I would say CAGR, right? Like, you know, all of the stuff you need to understand that, okay, you because you're going to invest your time and money in growing that sector, so you want to make sure you are knowledgeable enough, you're well prepared for it, and you have a team who can take you to the next level. So it's it's a it's a really a science, really. You know, you have to go, and then when you add, you are adding based on these kind of things. Well, if you do that methodically and and with a proper planning, um, you could go north of 100 plus million revenue, and you might um, you know go 100 million enterprise value of the business. Awesome, much beyond. That's awesome. Um, well, Scott, I think we've got some fodder for some other future episodes kind of coming out of, of this content, and maybe even some questions that we get from some folks. So what are your what are your thoughts? I mean, one of my takeaways was that, you know, Samir was saying in um, one of the episodes on this topic that, you know, it's as he can talk about it casually as someone who's done this before. Hey, it's not easy, but it is simple if you stay disciplined and true to the framework that Samir is laying out here. Um, it's simple, but it doesn't mean that it's just going to happen automatically. It's going to yeah. take a lot of discipline, I imagine, and a lot of uh, wash, rinse, and repeat. I'm sure not every day feels like that high five moment that Samir had when they crossed that hundred million dollar yeah. line as a team and crossed that threshold and barrier into a different kind of business. And well, and, and, then and knowing um, Samir and, and also from his LinkedIn, it seems like he gets a lot of inspiration from. Uh, from some books and other other sources. So yes. maybe we can catch that in another episode. I like that idea. Uh, in fact, we talked about one of them in particular while we were uh, creating this podcast, and um, which is uh, Samir instructed us to stop overthinking things. So we're gonna talk about that in another episode that you can find, uh, just sort through them. In fact, I think it might even be sequentially after this one or before, it. it'll be somewhere in the middle anyway. Um, yeah. by the time we actually drop these episodes. I'm excited and uh, I want to thank you both for the time and I want to encourage everyone that if you still have more time to click one of the other episodes. And until you do, we are now hired.